Hello, my friends. Welcome to another Rule Speed Through with John LaRufa, myself. I will be talking today about Black Angel, one of the uh, newest games that I have in my collection. And also, it is such a good game. I can't wait to go through this. I really want to get it to the table as fast as possible for you. And if you're reviewing the rules later, hopefully this will help you do the same. Let's get right to it. All right, let's begin with a quick overview of the components. Um, this is the space lane where the Black Angel is flying, trying to get to the planet Spes. When you um, advance the tiles as this goes through the game, you'll remember this kind of comes down as soon as it falls off. We're going to place this tile right here at the beginning of the track as you kind of approach it, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. You've got your own AI board with your matrix of the different um, techs that you have, and uh, these things kind of are used for bonuses throughout the game. As you remember, you've got your resources, you've got your repair cubes, and you've got your little ships. You also have a little pool of your um, AI robots over here, one in the break room, and then some of these at the uh, stations, which indicate how many dice that you're going to be rolling in each turn. You've got this own little spot here, and one for the AI. Uh, I shouldn't say the AI because that's uh, redundant. One for the solo um, bot in this game, and this is their area, this is yours. And then you've started by seeding the board, as you remember, with certain techs and certain um, enemy uh, cards that are going to hold you up, plus your starting hand. Now there's basically two types of turns you're going to take in this game. One is called uh, Sequence A, and Sequence A is the bulk of what you're going to be doing. You're going to follow these steps. Step number one is optional. Step number two must be taken. Number three must be taken. And then this gives you some um, some little background of the things you can do with your dice in those steps. Sequence B is kind of a reset step, and it's also how the Black Angel is going to advance, and it's sort of like advancing the timer throughout the game. So we're going to take a look at each of these individually. All right, so I said sequence A is the meat and potatoes of the game, and it's going to start by the first thing that you're going to do is decide whether you're going to optionally activate any of these uh, AI techs that you have. You can activate them by playing a specific color that matches the tech, and in the beginning you start with three of them, and that would activate any of that particular color in the row. So let's say you had a situation like this, where you had these tiles from a previous spot, and as you remember, when you insert tiles, which we'll talk about in a little bit, they have to be inserted from the bottom, so they're going to insert from the bottom and come into play um, as you have them uh, come in. But for the purposes of this, you're going to be able to activate all three of these. If you put your gray card over here, you would be then activating only this gray one, not this green one in the row. The exception to that is if you use one of these red cards, the red card will activate all colors, no matter what it is, except, of course, the black do not activate, and we'll talk about the advanced text in a little while. So that's the first thing you can do. It's completely optional. You do not have to do it at all. Now moving on to step two in sequence A, this is not optional, this is where you must select either your dice or a die from the, um, the solo mode opponent and use that die. If you want to choose one from the solo mode, you must pay one of these resources right here, you put that in the bank. The solo will get one point because he always converts anything you give to him to points, or anything he gets throughout the game to points, so he would get one point, and then you would be able to choose one of his dice, let's say I want to choose this nice green one here, I would go ahead and use that, and then I would pick an action area, either the top here or the bottom, to be able to use that green one. We'll talk about the different actions in a second um, as we go forward. Once I've selected the die, done the action, then I complete the uh, round by moving this, let's say I chose this spot, back into this area right here, and I take a card matching the dice that I just used and put it into my supply. As you remember, only six cards of colors over here, no more than that. If you have more, you have to discard, but you can hold any number of these alien cards uh, throughout the game, so that's not an issue at all. And you're going to be using these cards for flying the missions or for powering up your AI technologies. The other thing we can do with the dice is if we decide to use a die, for instance, that has kind of a face we don't like, we can spend one of these repair cubes back to the supply to flip the die on its other side, getting a better side. So the, the star represents a zero, but if you flip it, it's a two. The ones flip into threes, and you'd never, of course, flip a two or a three back to the other side. One of the things that should be noted is that when you purchase a die from an opponent, you can never pay a repair cube to then flip it. You get what you get when you purchase that. Okay, let's talk about the variety of actions that you can take when you're selecting a die. So there are two or three colors, each with two different actions. Let's go ahead and, and work them through um, according to the, uh, the player aid. But remember, you do not need to do these in any particular order. They can be done whenever you want. So the first action I'm going to talk about is the actual discovery te discover technology action. You're going to choose a die. You're going to put it on that space. And now you have to remember, if there are any repair cubes here, if there's one repair cube, nothing happens. It's fine. If there is two repair cubes, then this die is not worth three. It is worth one less. It'll actually be downgraded to a two. And you can only use two pips on it to activate the action. Additionally, if there had been one of these alien cards there, you'd have to resolve the penalty by going here, regardless of how many repair cubes are there. So in this case, you'd have to discard one of your mission cards of choice, not the, um, not the red card, to be able to go to this area. Okay, so once you've done that, paid all the penalties, then you can take the action. In this case, I have three to spend. So if I had three to spend, I would be able to look over here on my technology uh, tiles, and I'd be able to choose um, a level one tile, which costs one, or a level two tile, which costs two, or any combination. So if there was extra ones out here, then I would be able to choose uh, these tiles and uh, get all three of these if that was available to me. When I choose a tile, I will take them, and I will insert them into my uh, AI brain. So, so if you're playing on the boat, the uh, advanced mode, they come with a one-time use. If you're not, you would insert them with this face uh, up right here, and any of the colors the yellow, the gray, and the green can be put into any of these sides. If you insert them where there's nothing, it just stays right there. If you insert them where there is something, it's going to push one of these tiles off the board, and you're going to hold that tile in reserve for a later time because there may be a way that you might score points. If you're using one of these advanced techs, it must insert over here, and you can either push it up this way or push it over this way. These techs are useless unless you can find a way to get them into these slots, i.e. by pushing them off the board. And we'll talk about that at the end. But if you can push these off the board, you're going to sign them to slot one of these three slots for a potential bonus at the end of the game, depending on which one that you've chosen. 
It should be noted that when you take one of these tiles, they are immediately replaced with a new one. However, when you take one of these regular technology tiles, they are not replaced. They replace in a different step on a different action. The next thing we're going to talk about here is replacing the um, actual, uh, repairing the ship, pardon me. To repair the ship, you're going to spend a gray die and you're going to put it on this action right here. And it's quite simple. You basically look for these red cubes and you pull them off you, to the tune of how many pips you've used. And then you're able to assign them to your board if you want to take bonus action. So in this case, I can assign them to this to take this action right here and to this to take that action right here. If I want to assign them to one of these one-time uses that is not flipped yet, I can, if I want, flip it over first and then assign it. Obviously, that would not be a good play, but it is possible to do that. You can also flip these at any time, even if you don't want to take the one-time bonus. If you want something else below it, you can flip them over and use them during the activation step. And so once you have placed these, they stay here on these cards until the sequence B, which we'll talk about in a little bit. The next action you can take is to actually fend off the aliens, where you're going to destroy the Ravagers, and these Ravager cards can be in one, two, or three um, sets that are on these tiles. In order to do that, you're going to play a die, you're going to put it on this icon right here, and you have to remove all of the cards that are in that location. So for instance, in this location, or this location, pardon me, I need to have two of these pips to be able to remove this. I have three, so I can take these two off right here, I can put them in my supply, which I'll be able to use for later, and then I can choose another one if I'd like, which I do, to take this off and do that, and that would be all three. I would not be allowed to remove, for instance, one from here, one from here, and one from there. If I remove, I must remove all from a specific location. And you score no points when you're doing that, but it gives you red cards to use in the future. And the final action you can take is the one that is a little bit more convoluted than the others, and it has to do with how you place ships onto the space board and how you leave mission cards behind. So let's explain it in stepwise order. The first thing you're going to be able to do when you take this action, and there's a yellow, a gray, or a green version of the action, is you are going to assign a die. So let's say I'm going to assign a three over here, like I had in the earlier time, to this spot, and then I can move a ship three slots outside from the alien, I'm sorry, from the Black Angel. The only thing is I cannot move through these asteroid fields, that's not allowed, um, and uh, this spot is a zero spot, so I would start counting from the first spot over. Now, I have to be able to have a ship, and I have to have an available robot to use, so I will be able to put them in this area, and then I can move them out. Now, since I was dealing with a green card, I could stop right there if I'd like, I could go forward, I could do whatever I feel like, but I can move up to three spots as long as I'm across here. In this case, this green card has an activation ability, so I want to keep it on the board for as long as I feel that I can use it. So I'm probably going to move one, two, maybe even um, right here, if I wanted to stop a specific uh, bonus tile from the uh, artificial or the solo mode activating. But let's say I move it right here, three. Then if I stop, so that is the first thing. I could also, if I don't want to launch a ship from here, if I had a ship out here already, I can choose to move an existing ship on the board. In this case, I didn't have one, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch it. Now, in once I've stopped, if I stop on a tile that matches the color which I used from the die, I can put the ship out here, I can land the ship right here, and then I will take the... I'll take control of the ship, scoring any bonuses that are listed right below the card. Okay, in this case, I would score one point because there is a one point marker right here. I cannot take that action if I do not have an um, available robot in the break room. Since I do, I can go ahead and put that out, and then when I do that, that allows me to have access to using that card later. In addition, now I have to look and see where Ravagers appear. So any of these little red icons here on the board will cause, that are adjacent to my area will cause Ravagers appear. So there's even one over here. So I have to draw three cards and resolve these. I draw the card. And I go ahead and I look to see what number it tells me to place it in. In this case, it says six. So I put it into spot number six. It is my third card there, and I have to add a repair cube, or a damage cube, pardon me, to the board, which will later need to be repaired if I want to uh, keep that from cascading down. And again, I have to do it three times, so here comes another one. I add that over there, and I put this over here. And then a third hits on level one, so I put it over here, and I go ahead and put it there. Remember, when you're taking these actions, these spots, you only have to deal with the the negative event on the top card. The rest of the bottom ones do not count as far as our things. Now, let's say I was to put one on here and I already had two of these cubes there. I would then have to put an addition, another damage on one of my dice. The dice damage only affects you if you're forced to roll that die. If you're forced to roll that die for any reason, you will remove the damage. It just goes back to the uh, general supply, but you have to pay one victory point to do so. If there was a card here that was already full and you did not, um, you, you drew another six, you would put that out of the game to, um, and then draw another card. So it would cycle through this faster and that is one of the ways the game can end is to run out of these cards and not be able to draw another one when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to so we'll talk about the end conditions here in a little bit the last thing to consider on this command your ship action which I've been talking about this one right here is that now it is time to add new technologies so in the upper part of these cards there are little technology tiles which you can see right here that tell you where to insert them so in this green case here I would take a green technology and I would insert it from the bottom and move this up if there were two action two different technologies I would insert from top to bottom as you can see on this so I would have inserted a gray first and then a green so there's four steps move your ships or launch one and move it Place a mission card if you've mashed, put a robot on there, deal with the Ravagers appearing, and then finally put new technology tiles out on the board. Now let's talk about sequence B. When you have no dice left, you are forced to take sequence B. If you decide, though, that you want to take sequence B earlier and you have dice in your queue, you can do so, but you lose one point for every die that you still have in this area. Sequence B, though, is usually taken when there's no dice left. And then what you're going to do is the first thing you're going to do is take a look at how many robots, perhaps I had a second robot in this little station here, how many robots of my color I have, and I'm going to choose those dice, one per robot, 
right there to four. I'm going to roll those on the board, and then I'm going to put them all in my area. Then I have the option, if I want, to lock one of these die that will protect it from being stolen by someone else. I can pay one resource to lock it. And in the case here, I'm going to lock this three because that will most certainly be gobbled up by the uh, solo automa opponent. So once I've done that and played these dice, then I will go ahead and I will clear off any cards or repair cubes that are on my board. So if I had a couple repair cubes here, and perhaps I had a card that I activated over here, and one that I activated over here, um, then I will basically take these and put them into their respective discard piles out of the game for the rest of the game. And then I will take all of these repair cubes and put them into my general supply, where they're now available to be used uh, either to flip die over or to be spent on some of these various mission actions that come out throughout the game. The AI never gets a bonus there. He always just gets three points. But if it was me, I could dock against his card. He would get three points and I would get three shifts. And there's a variety of different things. Again, that would be if it was at the back and was ejected by a board moving away. Once a card is ejected, if it is yours, you slide it under your board, and this will allow you to get further bonuses from these black tiles, which we'll talk about at the end of the game. The more cards you could put in there, the more likely you're going to have a larger and larger amount of bonus points to be able to gain through that operation. And that is the end of sequence B. Now, I've talked to you a lot about all the different things you can do. You take the first turn in this game, the AI follows. The, when, pardon me, the solo bot follows. When the solo bot follows, he always has these exchange rates for any kind of item he would get in the game, regardless of the situation. So they're all the same, even though you wonder, oh, are they different values? No, they're all the same depending on, uh, they're, they're not depending on anything, they're all the same. When you flip over a card, you're going to take the top action as far as what the die he will be wanting to do. If on your previous turn, you used a sequence A action. If you used a sequence B action, you're going to reference the bottom one. In this case, since I just used a sequence B action, I would go ahead and I would reference this, and the AI would choose their gray die to do the action. Let's say I did not have that die lock. The AI I would always choose a value of the best die. So he would not use his own, he would use mine, and I would gain a resource in compensation for him using that. Then he would go ahead and carry out the action. If he had no gray die, he would resort to the top area over here. He would use the yellow die. In this case, he would use his own yellow die to perform this action. If he had no yellow die and I had no yellow die, so there were no yellow dies available, he would just gain three points and he would exhaust one of his available die. The AI will always draw a card, no matter what, as long as he has one die available. If he does not have a die available, he will go through his own sequence B, which basically results in him rolling three dice again, setting the back end. He never locks a die, and then he would move the ship forward, and we would have the Black Angel do the same board reset, and things come through as similar to my sequence B action. Any cards, again, that fall off that were his, he would get three points, whether it was on my turn or his turn. Now, finally, let's go through his actual actions. In this case, both of these actions on the A and the B side refer to him gaining technology tiles. He's going to gain the one on the top that is the closest to the top, and he is going to eject that from the game, just remove it. If there is this little icon, he's only going to gain the basic tiles. If there is a black and the white, then he's going to gain a uh, advanced one first from the top, and then he's going to gain a white. Just like the human player, he has to pay the same number of pips, and so when he does that, if he only has one or two pips, he may not be able to complete the entirety of the action, but he's able to take what he can. When he takes it, he's going to score points, four for an advanced, or two for a regular. If he cannot take any tiles at all, he's going to use the dice, for instance, if he has a a, a star, then he's going to use the action just to gain three points and spend the die. The next two actions are pretty simple. The repair is going to basically have him repairing in either clockwise or counterclockwise motion, depending on the arrow, and he's going to be removing cubes and scoring points for those cubes according to the payout uh, throughout the board. Same thing with the uh, fend off the ravagers. He's going to re remove ravagers up to his die amount based on the usual rules in either clockwise or counterclockwise order, depending on this. And again, he's going to score points for each of those that is removed, just like anything else. If there's none of those available or he cannot do it, he will score three points for each of those actions. And then the final three actions are a little bit different. They're all about commanding his ships. When he commands a ship, he will go ahead and take whatever color he is going to use as a die, look at the ship, and decide, is it one with an activation cost, or is it one, like I showed before, that has an end-of-the-map ejection thing? So one way or the other, he's going to make a decision. If it's one of these, he's going to put it on the back tile, as far back as he can, on the matching area, and he's going to take one of his robots and put it in this space. If it is one like this, he's going to put it on the front tile, and he is going to put it in the matching area and go ahead and take one of his little spots. If he ends up putting it on one of the comments, he immediately scores three extra points. If this has a, and it always will have a point or a reward, he will always get that in points, or he'll convert those two points when he places it down. And that is the only thing he does. Even if he has a, a, a star value of zero, he's still going to go ahead and make that move. The number of pips is irrelevant, and then he will go ahead and put his die in those areas. Okay, so that always happens regardless of the situation. Um, also, if the AI is going through any of these situations where there is a penalty, he will enforce the penalty as best he possibly can throughout the game, making it happen. And if for whatever reason it prevents him from doing the action, he'll again just gain three points and discard the die. I want to make one more thing clear. I didn't talk about this earlier. On these cards, the human player can spend a die to activate this card one, two, or three times if they spend one of these colored dies directly to the card on their turn, and they have a ship on it. So if I was to have this situation right here, I have this yellow die that I can go ahead and use to activate this two times. It does not get played out here, and once I'm done with it, I simply put it back over here. That's how you activate these cards. It is one of your actions when you go ahead and do a uh, dice move in sequence A. 
So you're going to get to the end of the game when one of two things happen. First of all, when this tile comes off the board through a maneuver, as we've talked about before, then the planet's going to show up. And as soon as in stage, in sequence B, this advances and ends on the planet, you're going to take, you're going to finish the current round. You're all going to take one more turn and then the game is going to be over. If you end like that, you are allowed to do the exchange of leftover robots here, leftover resources, or leftover ships at a two to one ratio for points. If you do not make it there because you exhaust the deck here, if these are all exhausted, that will also trigger the end of the game. In that case, you do not get to do the exchange because you didn't complete your mission, and so you just are en end up with the number of points that you have. Just to clarify, the end of the game is triggered when this deck becomes empty, not when during sequence A, not when you go to draw a card and there is not one there. It's when it empties that will then trigger the end of the game for the usual rules where you finish your current turn and then do the final round. Now, at the end, you're going to score bonuses for any of these bonus tiles that you may have unlocked. There are a variety of different things, but they have to be here. You're maxed out at four points total unless you have extra cards tucked under here that have been ejected from the board. In that case, it gives you plus two for each card that you already have to the bonus that you could potentially score. Also, you'll be able to do the conversion ratio, like I said, if the Black Angel has landed on the planet. And then the top score wins. The AI does not get any opportunity for any bonus scoring. They are, pardon me, the solo bot has the points that they're left over. At the end of the game, whoever um, has the most points is the winner. And so there you have it, folks. That's how to play Black Angel. If you have any questions, please put the your information in the comments and I'll respond to them. Again, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. To see more videos of this kind, I'll be continuing to chug them out because I love doing this. And I really hope you enjoy this game as much as I do. Thank you very much.